Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans, and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist, and internationally published author, helping take your life, business, body, health, and wellness from where you are right now to being unstoppable. And I'm super excited to introduce our special guest today. It's a world-renowned fitness trainer and certified nutritionist, Gillian Michaels, the most recognized brand in fitness around the globe. And Gillian has really inspired me to change from my, my career, from being a chartered accountant to being a successful fitness business owner now. Please join me in welcoming Gillian. This is a great interview. Hi, Gillian. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a question for you around COVID and the fitness industry. Okay. So I'm COVID ready. here, COVID here in I'm in Melbourne, Victoria, we've had to shut our facilities for seven and a half months. And we've only just reopened this week. And I mean the science is so clear about the impact on mental health and so forth. And yet the decision makers seem to fail to recognize us as an essential service that we're effectively been labelled as dirty and unprofessional. So I was wondering, what do you think we could do to change that image of the fitness industry so that if we do have a further lockdown and so forth, we could be considered an essential service? Okay. It's a loaded question, and, and here's why, Rob. So first of all, you have to remember that not every facility is created equal, right? Yes. So unfortunately... Um, you know, we're only as good as the lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. So I can only speak to what's going on in America, but like I could walk into a place called Bay Club here. And when they were open, it was like, there was a whole, you'd use a machine. It had a sign on it. Nobody used it until you were done. Then they would disinfect the machine and it was like impeccable. Right. But then yeah. there might be like a little personal training gym and they don't have the money for the staff and they don't have the time and they're a little bit lax. And then you got five cases of COVID coming out of there. Yes. So you know, and then, you know, you're asked these questions and you've got all these articles coming out in, in the States of like, oh, you know, gyms and restaurants, gyms and restaurants, so dangerous. And then I got asked the question while doing media recently. And it was like, well, you know, do you think it's safe? And the problem is none of us are medical professionals. So if we turn around and say, oh, it's a hundred percent safe, you know, yeah. it's, it's irresponsible. So you can't even say, so I said, look, if you're concerned about catching COVID, you know, if you're, if you're a person in a higher risk group, if it's, if, you know, then, then it might not be the best environment, but then utilize that facility online then. So yes. my argument would be, and, I, and I'm, look, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a politician. I'm not an economist. This is just a personal opinion. But what I would like to see is some method um, that resembles very much driving a car, right? People die in car accidents all the time. So yeah. what do we do? We don't text and drive. We don't drink and drive. We wear seat belts. We have driving laws. We have speed limits. To me, it's like we can't shut the globe down for two years. So give everybody a manageable way of life. So if it's a system for a gym that they have to adhere to or they get shut down, do it. And then yeah. allow that gym to provide services online for higher risk individuals, because personally, I would go to the gym, but yes. I don't want my mom going to the gym. So I yes. would like to offer my mom the ability to take those classes online. Again, not an expert, only speaking from the heart with zero understanding of the science here. But to me, I, that seems like a reasonable, intelligent way forward. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I love that. Um, so let's step away from COVID a little bit and look at um, something we're both passionate about, global overweight and obesity issues. So like in your country, I think it's yeah. about 72%. In my country, it's 67 It's like two thirds of the population. And yet no. we're, we're, living, we're living in a world where uh, you know, we have so much resources like your amazing products and app. Um, any YouTube video you watch, there's so many ads that come up about here, hey, this is how you lose weight, but we're getting worse. So why do you think we're getting it so wrong? Oh, there's so many different contributing factors, right? So there's big business, big agriculture. Um, it's cost effective 
to put cheap crap food in the market, uh, period. It's profitable, good for margins. And for the individual buying it, it's seemingly cost effective for them to get a bucket of chicken for the entire family. Yeah. You know. So what I try to explain to people is like what you're saving now by buying complete garbage, you're going to spend down the road on your healthcare in our country disease obesity related conditions are the number one cause of bankruptcy right so it's 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 giving people perspective but then on top of it there's the i think people are overwhelmed they're tired they're depressed they're burned out life is punishing and for them fitness just feels like more punishment on top of a difficult day so it's helping that individual realize that getting that 20 minutes of activity in, right? Choosing the chicken salad instead of the burger and fries has benefits that far supersede the burger and fries. So yeah. whether it's like, you're gonna meet your great grandchildren, you're gonna look great in your wedding dress, you're gonna feel comfortable in a two piece instead of a one piece, you, who knows? Whatever their reasons are, be they profound or superficial, if you can help them cultivate that vision and emotionally connect to it, it allows them to tolerate, I think, the work and the sacrifice associated with the goal of being healthy. And do you think that with COVID, like I'm not, I know it's a bit more relaxed in the US, but with COVID, do you think it's given people a greater perspective of, like I've been more grateful for spending, doing the homeschooling with my girls, for instance, and oh. just understanding what they're doing at school and connecting with them deeply. Um, online, people talk about getting fatter, not fitter. Um, but do you think people are getting a greater perspective and saying, you know what, I do need to be taking extra care of myself and I'm going to do that now? Some are, some are for sure. You know, I had a call with my, my money guy who like inv invests for me and he was so sweet. He's like, I want you to know that I've lost 15 pounds <laughs> <laughs> over the course of this year. And, you know, and he, he really took the opportunity to, to better himself. In some cases though, I think people are lonely, they're overwhelmed, um, they're struggling financially and they're not able uh, to take that first step. So I, I, don't, I don't judge anyone for that. Um, and while I would hope that they would seek out the silver lining, right? Of like, all right, what do you do when life gives you lemons, make lemonade? Hopefully this case, lemonade would be you know, reclaiming your fitness, recommitting yourself to living your longest, healthiest life. Um, if they haven't, I think we just need to be patient and continue to be empathetic, incentivize, and make health affordable and accessible for everyone so that when they're ready, right? When they have that fleeting moment of like, all right, I'm ready to make a change. The actions they take will yield powerful results to keep them motivated. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so final question. Yeah. How do we, let's say it's friend, partner, something like that. You're really into your fitness. The friend partner's not. How, that's starting to cause some tension, obviously. It's a really difficult one. Yep. How, do we go about, <laughs> how do we go about motivating that other person become on our journey with us or create a journey that we can share together? Okay. The loaded question. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to answer it as, as um, honestly as possible. So you, you've got two courses of action, right? If you engage in a relationship with someone, because one of the top reasons people cite for quitting a fitness regimen is their significant other, because you're breaking the status quo. Yes. So if you guys weren't healthy to begin with, and then you decide to change the game, you've now broken the status quo and that's, that's threatening for people. So first it's like you lead by example, right? And you hope that they see you in there. Like if she can do it, I can do it. And it's inspiring. Yes. And you tell the person what you need. I need you to go hiking with me instead of going to the buffet on Sundays. I need this. You give them details. You communicate with them. You then help them see if you can ask them leading questions to get them passionate about it, to help them identify their why, right? To do the work. It's like, you know, what do you see for us in the future? Uh, you know, what, what is it that you want for yourself long-term? How can you get them to connect 
emotionally, right? That cultivate that why and create that vision alongside you. So you're doing it together. If that approach does not work, which sometimes it doesn't, you've got the second alternative approach, which is a much more aggressive position. And it's like, look, you know what? I don't want to lay awake in bed every night worrying you're going to have a massive heart attack. We've got two kids. I'm scared for you. They're scared for you. It causes stress. It causes anxiety. And it's painful for the other person to hear. But if you can't motivate them with the why, in some cases, you can give them an experience that hurts. Because if it hurts more to keep doing what they're doing, maybe they'll yeah. change. Yeah. Now, potentially, neither of those two things will work because you can't change someone. They've got to change themselves. But if there's any hope for you to incentivize it, you start with A, you go to B, and at that point, it's out of your control. Yes. Yeah. After fantastic. that. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Gillian, for today. I truly appreciate your time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you.